greetings and salutations this is jason silverain and i'm going to be continuing my playthrough of sentience the android's tale now we just went through some of the background regarding the plot and the world here in the last episode but i'm going to continue walking around the base and introducing myself to everyone and we'll be reading their personnel files okay gritty personnel record has been unlocked in your database Oh da, mega da. Don't see many autos. Mm. Look at all that mega metal. Maybe I take you apart to see how you tick tock. Been yearning for a new toy. Maybe you it auto. Hmm. <laughs> how would you like to be taken to parts tempted? I can't offer it. Would you be able to put me back together again? Would you be able to put able to put me back together? Hmm. Fair query. Prefer you stay ticking. Maybe I'll let you be. No big thing, auto. Keep your metal. I really could do with some good scrap, though, for patching and fixing. How about you bring me 12 good bits of scrap metal in the next seven days, and maybe I'll give you something back. How'd that sound, Auto? Alright, this is actually a really good question to get done early. You can't get it done right away because some of the scrap only appears in the later uh, few days of the game. But it's one we can start working on. Nice, Auto. Really nice. 12 uh, good pieces on no deal. And there we go. There's our first task. Now, database, I believe in personal. We I neglected to go over Yuria, but born a penniless orphan on an unremarkable border planet, Yuria uh, Cisco showed an impressive degree of dedication and enjoyed to earn her place at Temco and Academy of Engineering. The company believes that she has the potential to be an extremely valuable commodity and a selection for the mission arc for us is a test of a resolve. Keep a close eye on this one. Then we have Gritty. The pilot only known as Gritty is one of those handful of Temco employees who are natives of the free systems. A fact immediately made apparent by her unusual nature uh, sorry, unusual manner of speech. Despite her eccentricity, she's an extremely gifted pilot. Her dauntless nature means she's Tended for the selected for more dangerous or unpopular assignments, such as her current position as flight captain on Arcturus. Uh, pretty much the only person who can fly and do a lot of the general engineering work on vehicles. So, I've got to remember where some of the scrap is. One of the first pieces is up here, though. So let's grab that. Also, take note, if you're going to be playing this, where these are. These are activity sensors, part of the defense grid, and they're to ensure no local wildlife comes a-wandering. Now, let me just familiar myself with the base. We do not want to be going to headquarters right away. We want to go around and introduce ourselves to everyone first, just for a few things. Also, there's no sense of rushing the plot, so... Let's go back to our engineering bay to begin with, because there was some scrap in there. So we've got one piece of scrap here. That's a tool. Ah, there we go. That's a second piece of scrap. Well, third, technically, but there's two in here. I forgot to talk to our little uh, android friend here, Silver One. Repair droid bleeps at you before returning to its duties. I mean, Tony can we talk to them, but they're such basic AI, they don't really do anything. At least not yet. Right, this is the private residence of the rocket and the technician. Another residence here. Now, I do believe all the residents are locked to begin with, and they're not really listed on the map. So let's head to... Uh, Agricultural. And here is yet another piece of scrap. Just goes to show how run down everything is. And it's really kind of worrying how little they take care of the place. There we go. Five pieces already. I believe there's nine on the first day. Finch. Converse. Bridging class. Now that takes me back. I know I'm just an agricultural technician, but don't let that fool you. I've actually done a lot of work with droids. Back in high school, I used to organize predator-prey contests. A lot of companies had surplus droids after the revolution, so we took them off their hands. 
The way this contest works, you program one droid as predator and the one droid as prey and then set them loose in an arena or park. Then we take bets on how long the prey would survive. Could take a while depending on how sturdy the droid was. I actually turned a good profit. Those uh, those were probably the best days of my life, I reckon. Now, what an interesting story. No. I wish you could ask if the prey ever won. Because that is curious. And also, that is a grim blood sport, considering, you know, these are AI. They're technically partly sentient. Okay, how did the Origin Class models fare? You guys did pretty good for an android, anyway. You were wily. Didn't stand a chance against a dedicated combat droid, though. Those things are killing machines, literally. Who sold high schoolers a combat droids? Rusty's personnel record. Great, another droid to come away and take the good jobs away from real living people. Union says the company is allowed to have one droid on this mission. Dumb rule, if you ask me. Should have destroyed you on the revolution. Not sure why we didn't. Makes me sick. Ugh, you're a moron. You know, it's like those they take our jobs types. It's like a hizzle. Yeah, you're not going to want the jobs that the, the people are taking, are you? So, database, personnel. I've just met, uh, met Fitch. Common form boy from P Planet Omai oh in Zeta Toucan, uh, Toucan system. Finch Anderson has found a place in Temco as an agricultural technician. Skills as a hunter and a tracker give him a large layer of experience. Oh, sorry, an extra layer of experience, which actually proved useful on a desert planet such as Arcturus. Of course, the real reason he was consigned to this unwelcoming wasteland is more to do with his personality profile, such as other employees often have reported finding him difficult to work with. And then we have Rusty. Residing firmly at the low end of the spectrum when it comes to his skills and capabilities as a technician, it's a little wonder that. Russell Rusty Dickinson has been consigned to an unwelcoming border wasteland of his Arcturus. If he improves himself to be reasonably adept in this assignment, it's possible that his longer career with the company, otherwise his association will proceed no further. Well, what do you expect? Blames Androids for the fact he doesn't uh, dedicate himself to his job, and he doesn't try to improve his skills. Over here, I believe, is the water pur purification system. Yep. Again, most of these little plants and shrubs can be examined, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll look into them a little bit later. Oops. Sorry. Slight click of the hand there. And here we go, another piece of scrap. And who do we meet now? Chet. Hmm. Well, look at you. Not quite what I imagined. Must be an older model, right? Interesting design. Uh, this might be rude to ask, but are you supposed to be male or female? Which would you prefer? I am male, obviously. I'm female, obviously. Gender is not important. Now... I know from gender not is not important that when you say that one, uh, he just goes on how it's important for humans and it makes it easier to identify. But I'm going to say a male because I'm just curious what he says. I am male, obviously. Right, that's what I figured. Never actually seen an android up close before. We had a few agricultural droids back on you on the farm. I grew up with nothing like you. Kind of weird looking at something that's so much like us but yet so different. I have to wonder if you see colours the same way we do. Do you t smell the same smells? Taste the same tastes? I mean, what does it feel like to be an android? Does it feel like anything? And again, you can ask what it would be like to feel... feel what does it feel like to be human? Well, I'd like to say we have a lot of similarities. Because that one, is it just goes fair point and it just ends. It was a bit of a lost chance for a conversation. Feel like... If it's a, uh, if it, is a lot. Uh, I can't say the word right now. You know what I mean? It's one of those really interesting queries. Okay, androids were created by humans in our image. We have a lot of similarities. Yes, I guess we must have programmed a lot of ourselves into you, the good and the bad. Hopefully more of the good for all our sakes. Again, that line is very similar. There's a few bits of conversation text where I do think they had 
a lost opportunity there. Ooh, ooh, little critter. Ditto. Creature entry has been unlocked in your database. So we have Chet. In terms of experience and reliability as a technician, Chet stiffens as somewhat overqualified his current assignment. However, he's expressed his desire to accompany his wife, Professor um, Hannibal, to Arcturus, and the company decided to allow it. Hardworking, exemplary employee, Chet seems to always get on well with his co workers, contributing to a pleasant working environment. Even barren wastes don't seem to dampen his spirits. And then we have our little critter. Okay, much like a small dinosaur in its appearance, Tittos are the clever scavengers of the desert, primarily, surviving primarily on feeding off kills of other large animals. The Ditto is a creature of very curious nature. Like crows of Earth, they display curious hoarding behavior, particularly around mirror like objects such as plates and dishes. Again, these little details actually do help you in some subquests. So, I believe we're. Yes, we're in the laboratories right now. Annabelle's personnel record has been unlocked. Finally, I'm eagerly awaiting your arrival. I got so excited when they told me we were receiving an android. I simply love your kind. I have ever since I was a little girl when my parents got me my very first pet robot. It was only a simple AI, of course. Rather like He looked rather like you, but smaller. Oh, I love my little Isaac, the games we would play together. Sounds charming. and What happened to Isaac? revolution. People didn't like to see a humanoid uh, robots around anymore, even if they were ch only children's toys. I suppose I'd outgrown him by that. Uh, sorry, I've grown him by then, anyway. That's what happens when we get older. Still think of him sometimes, though. He gave me a lot of good memories. Wish oh, I just wouldn't touch my equipment. Don't tell her I said that, though. Okay, well, there's a personnel record. When they had told me the company was actually sending us an android, I could hardly believe it. Here you stand, though. Perhaps they haven't completely forgotten about us after all. So what are your first impressions of Arcturus? I could be happy here. Perhaps it will grow on me. Frankly, I hate this planet to have any opinion. Perhaps it will grow on me. In other words, you aren't impressed. That may change in time, as you, as you say. We'll see. As for myself, I find Arcturus to be quite a fascinating place. I think people underestimate this planet as more to it than meets the eye. Don't let anyone tell you it's cursed either, that's just superstition. Sure, a few psych uh, sorry, a few colonists in the past have developed psychological problems, but it's hardly uncommon on far flung assignments like this one. Oh dear. See, that starts hinting at some of the problems we're going to be facing. Being so far away from the rest of human civilization, it isn't good for us. At least droids don't have to worry about such things, huh? And oh, that is not a piece of junk. I thought it was. So, two more in the database. We have Annabelle. Annabelle Stephens is a gifted um, scientist who specializes in the field of botany. Her work is one of the only elements of tourist at the assignment that she might bear some useful fruit, so to speak, studying the chemical properties of the planet's flora. Husband, Chet Stephens, is a provident agricultural technician who is competed on this book project the pair of them are considered to be extremely useful agents and should be treated with due care and attention so look they are probably the most valuable people on this project and there we go nice friends is a climatologist some renowned who company feels are better suited to more important assignment than Arcturus project however she believes the planet may hold certain features of potential scientific interest due to the success of her previous work the company has allowed her to study here for a few years during this time she has developed a relationship with Piers Kendrick who is another valuable employee in the opinion of Temco Corp the two of them could be a very uh, useful unit for the future which is pretty amusing considering uh, the company is trying to purposely set up certain members of their staff I think that goes a bit beyond the normal um, company kind of guidelines though doesn't it now, if you're curious what these are, these are actually food storage. Weirdly. Oh. oh there's another piece of junk. Where was that? Again, 
Sometimes you'll see uh, a symbol on the top of the screen, and I believe that's like an interaction symbol. Ah, munitions. I'm trying to remember where I, where I am. Okay, munitions. Carter's personal record has been unlocked in your database. Converse. Great. A mimic. That's just what we need. That was sarcasm, by the way, in case you can't compute that kind of thing. What are you even doing here? What the hell do we need an android for on this mission? They should just send you back to whatever scrap heap you crawled out of. Hmm. Have I done something to offend you? Your existence offends me. I don't know why they still keep you androids around. We don't need you here. We don't want you here. I'm not one of those scared muckers who are actually afraid of progress, by the way. I actually fought for your kind during the revolution. I did it because I believed in something. I believed that AI would bring us peace and prosperity. When the outcome of the war comes down to whoever side has the best AI, it always seems a bit fucking pointless, doesn't it? Why fight a war you going? You know you're going to lose, right? I can't believe how stupid I was back then. Our galaxy will never have peace. You should never stop dreaming. Yes, humans are too warlike for that. Can't argue with that. You got his figures, droid. I mean, last time I told him to never stop dreaming, but uh, I didn't feel like being so nice to him this time. This is actually one of the chaps I brought with me at the near the end of the game. And he kind of does a personality flip, which I don't think is that well written. It kind of is a bit too drastic. He kind of goes back to his old self. Okay, lug. Okay, database. So we have our personnel with Carter. An experienced sergeant at arms, Carter Jones saw his first combat during the People's Revolution. From the perspective of history, he fought on the losing side, choosing to serve the interests of the corporations and pro-tech groups. The Arcturus excitement is not seen by the company as being especially dangerous, but nevertheless it's standard policy to station a security chief on the frontier projects. This may be Carter's final appointment with Temco before he's retired. So he's on his way out. That's one of the reasons I kind of picked him, because he can become quite friendly with you. With the exception of a few team, lead, uh, sorry, team leads having known, I don't think I've ever countered a creature quite as stupid as the lug. The first time I saw them, I wondered if they might be useful as draft animals. Now I wonder if, if it's worth the effort of trying to train these big dumb idiots. Or big dumb adults, sorry. Paraphrasing there. Okay, so we're heading to Agricultural 1 now. And there is absolutely no one here. Wonderful. Or am I just blind? I don't even think there's any... Oh, no, there is some scrap here, so we're not completely uh, out of it. Now, there are usually two technicians in there. I think I've got to do some cutscenes first. So we've almost got all of the scrap we can get at this point. I'm trying to remember where the last few pieces are. But we want to head to medical first, which is at the top, and the chapel before we move into the headquarters. And then the uh, quest will begin. Oh, here we go. There it is. Now, this is the transmitter. We'll be seeing a lot more of that in the future. So, this is the creepy chapel of creepiness. Jonah's personal record has been unlocked in your database. Converse. Welcome to your sacred chapel, Android. I've heard talk of your arrival. Although I am a durant of the faith, I welcome you as a fellow servant. There are those amongst the faithful who would mistrust you. They might even call you an abomination, a soulless mechanoid. Soulless you may be, but I believe you have the capacity to serve the faith as well as any human. Which makes you think I have no soul. I don't believe that humans have the capacity to create a soul. If we don't have the capacity to create a soul, then how the hell does having kids work? Because technically you're creating another human, therefore we've got to create a soul to go in there as part of the process. Not that I'm really a religious person in any way, I'm agnostic, atheist, kind of borderline. It's more of a case of I don't bother thinking about it, uh, because once you snuff it, I'll figure it, out, I'll figure it out then. I believe in something more, something greater than ourselves. Let me tell you what I believe. Do I have a choice here? The focal point of the faith is are the sacred stones known the asteroite. They were first discovered on the moon of Yamar in the Tau Setai system. 
Kashamina, the explorer who discovered those first stones, also became the founder of the faith. She was a sick woman, terminally ill. The asteroid spoke to her and cured her of a sickness. Kashamina lived for another 33 years before she finally ascended. During that time, she spread the faith across the galaxy. Deposits of asteroid have since been discovered at seven other locations. Those various moons and planets of the Archi Archeosis, I think, basically holy sites of our religion. There is much unknown about asteroid, how it came to be formed, the true nature of its power, predominant belief that this asteroid stones are fragments of the divine. Many old world religions have attempted to incorporate the sacred stones into their own belief systems. As one of the foundation stones of New Jerusalem, or for example, or as the tenth uh, sacred gem of um, Dashavrata? Dashavratan? Uh, I am unfamiliar with the word. The faith welcomes everybody. There's no hierarchy, no hidden or secret knowledge. You will find there are a number of faithful here. And of Taurus. Not yet. There's obviously yet not converted to our path. I will call upon you to help me spread the truth. We'll see. I must return to my prayers. Frickin' loonies. That's all I can say. The bugger didn't even, like, get permission. He, well, he just set up as a personal person. You know, he's not part of the company. So individual on Octavius is not in the direct employment of Temco Corporation. That priest known as Jonah is a strict adherent of the faith, plus answers to a higher power. Religious freedom is given the right to reside and preach in Arcturus, and is generally considered sound policy to provide employees with a place of worship. Since he's not employed by Temco, there's no information based on him, or based on his background. Now, just got this. Almost all, almost done. Still no word from my father about getting a transfer. I've been weeks now. He's a busy man, your dad. I'm sure he'll get back to you sooner or later. I don't know about that. He likes to torture me. He always has. So if you do get a transfer, do you still want me to take me with you? I haven't said otherwise, have I? Must I constantly repeat myself? Well, sometimes you like it when I make you repeat yourself. Oh, that's nice. I really have a lot more work to be doing. Fine, fine. Hey there, good looking. You must be the new android. You gonna let me pass? Thanks. Walden's personnel record unlocked. Converse. Well done, Tenko has finally sent us a decent piece of technology, I see. From Dr. Walden, the chief medical specialist of Alpha Station. Believe it or not, I've been looking forward to working with you. There are many here who don't trust your kind, though you still possess the same fear and ignorance that led to the revolution. Don't worry though, as long as you do as you're told, don't get in anyone's way, we'll sure we'll get along just swimmingly. The sole purpose of an android is to empower your human master, and never forget that. You got the, I'm happy to serve you. My purpose is to fulfill my program goals. I must empower myself, it won't always be this way. My p Last time I said I will obey you master, but eh. Okay. Your primary goal is to be of service, correct? It's just a question of semantics. In any case, I'm sure it'll be quite, be quite useful to me. Personally, I found it easy to relate to robots and people. I'm not sure why that might be. One thing I never understood about androids, though, why do they make you look like us? Every other kind of droid is designed to be to its, according to its purpose. Look at my medical droid, for example. Your design's... well... sorry. Your design seems, well, awkward, frankly. Humans should look at humans, robots should look at robots. Why confuse matters? My design allows me to film on the film. My duty is humans seem to like looking at themselves. Perhaps it seems it's to make us seem less frightening. It is possible. There is almost something almost comical about the way you potter around with that awkward mechanical gate of yours. Anyway, that's quite enough idle chuddle for one day, I think. Now I'm gonna end this one with his personnel record. Okay. Walden is one of the main sources of conflict. You may have gotten he's not happy even here. His mother is a renowned te telerobotic surgeon, while his uh, father made a fortune dealing asteroid. John Walden dreamed of following his mother's footsteps, but despite these high aspirations, he found he was no more than a middling student of medicine. Needless to say, serving as a medical specialist on an obscure frontier outpost is not what he had in mind for himself. However, the company does not consider him to 
be an agent with many prospects. If it's not for his father's influence, he'd probably not be an operating employee at all. So he's only here because daddy said he could be. Or... Personally, it's just the company wanting links to his father. And with that, I'm going to call this episode to a close, and I will catch you next time.